Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Dark Eye Law podcast. Today's topic are the Angrashim, the dwarfs of Aventuria. The information in this podcast is for game masters only because it is unknown to the most Aventurian citizens and even the most wise scholars. We're beginning with the primitive times. In the old and mythical dark ages, the children of the earth the giants and the children of heaven, the gods, fought for the right to enter the heavenly fortress of Alvaran. Later in time, some of the earthborn, the old dragons, made peace with the children of heaven and therefore became gods. The other dragons denied to enter heaven. They were constrained to the realm of the physical plane. Subsequently, they fought each other, especially the battle between Farmalor and Pudakor shook the continent. Pudakor lost the fight and was thrown into the third sphere, the realm of mortals. The six dragons remaining in the physical plane were named as guardians of this plane. Pudakor was named the Lord of the Elements, but he abused it to empower the lizards and later on to gain power over them. 36,000 years ago, he used the key of Humus to open a magical channel to the citadel of the Humus Elemental in the south of Aventuria. The energies which were set free during that formed a huge jungle. Later, Pudakor lost the key of ice to what formed the icy plains in the high north. 9000 years before Bosporan's downfall, Pudakor conquered the area from the Rushtul Wall to the Yakwe River. During this time, the first dwarfs were named in history. The Angrisham themselves say that they were created 10,000 years ago in the Iron Forest by a giant named Angrosh. By the opinion of some clans, Angrosh went insane during this act because of the fires of the raging golden dragon Purdakor. Based on dwarven lore, there were eight brothers, the ancestors of the dwarven race. They had the duty to defend the earth and its treasures against the greedy dragon Pudakor, who is named Pradax in Angram, the old dwarven language. During this time, the gorgeous dwarven town of Xolosh was built. The damnation of Ordemon, 7500 until 7200 before Bustburn's downfall. The Dwarven King Ordemon, who named himself as the most intelligent and most couraged of his race, went out to beat Purdakor by stealing his hoard. But standing on it, Ordemon was seen by the dragon and directly tortured with a jinx. But still after a long time of agony, the dwarf stayed silent. Pyrdekor did let him go, not with his crown, but with a burning mark on his forehead instead. Like a miracle, Ordemon made the way to his brothers, mutilated as he was, but he also led the spies of Pyrdekor to them. This thought came to his mind right before the gates of Xolosh. He made it to warn his brothers, just before his body bursted into flames. So he was the first dwarf ever to die. Unknown if it was Pyrdekor or the punishment of Angrosh who killed him. The Battle of Heaven's Fire 7200 before Bosporan's downfall. After a short time of preparation for the dwarves, the attack came. Twenty golden dragons and an army of lizards. Two out of three dwarven cities in the Valley of Heaven's Fire were destroyed. 
The third, Xorlosh, was heavily damaged and countless dwarves were killed. With them, the whole clan of Ordamon. The last one of his clan was Organa, the oldest daughter of Ordamon. She fought against the Emperor Dragon named Ancarion the Red, son of Pödekor. Both killed each other. What led to a ceasefire so the dwarves could rebuild Xorlosh. Pödekor was weakened by this battle, so he needed his time to grow strong again. From this day on, the Angrosham and the lizard folk as well as the dragons became mortal enemies. Millennia of battle, 7000 until 4500 before Bosporan's downfall. In the following millennia, a lot of isolated dwarven fortresses were destroyed by dragons. Though the dwarf found tactics and weapons to fight them, like the spear and the crossbow. Over the centuries, the eight ancestors of the great clans found their death in battle, and the bonding between the clans vanished. During that time, a great migration started to the Anvil Mountains, where the dwarves did build a new fortress. There they met a species called Gromes, a very greedy one with a magical knowledge. Until today, they don't like each other in the Anvil Mountains. Most of the time dwarves and gromes try to avoid each other, but in rare occasions they trade together. In 4800 before Bosporan's downfall, an army of dragons and their followers marched through the valley of Yaquir, where they were beaten by the Anvil Dwarfs, the so -ca also called Forge Dwarfs, and their leader Atax Steel Eye. Because of that honorful act, no one in Xorlosh complained as the dwarves of the Anvil Mountains named Artax, son of Androsh, their king. And so the mountain kingdom of Toshmur was called, Woodwatch was born. Their battle with the dragons went on for nearly 3000 years and the Anvil Dwarves became famous for their Warcraft and their weapons. The Elemental Wars, 4500 until 4200 before Bosporan's downfall. During the ages, the Dwarves lived in their mountain fortresses and waited for the Great, great Peace to come. But the power of Pödekor came to a zenith in the year 4500 before Bosporan's downfall with a victory over the high elven city Tishiana, with which Pyrdekor made the elves to his slaves and named them as guardians of the elemental key of ore. In this time, Pyrdekor convinced, conceived a plan to subordinate the dwarves. With his dark magic, he formed iron bodies as tall as dwarves from the iron heart of the Windhang Mountains. And he enslaved elemental spirits were bound to these bodies. They were a really threat to the dwarves. Shadows came out of tunnel walls to ambush dwarven workers. Elemental warriors materialized out of living room floors. Enemy made out of rock and iron, whose wounds caused by plates simply closed after seconds. Never again, in no other point of history, the dwarven race was so close to total extinction. Whole underground towns were depopulated. It is said that the Earth Mother Sumu herself gave the dwarves the inspiration to leave the underground in their dreams, to live on the surface and to feast there on the elemental powers to fight Pudakor with equal weapons. Thousands followed her call, but the councilmen denied their request, thinking 
of it as a trick of protocol. But finally, in the year 4400 before Bosporin's downfall, a few dozen dwarves made it around the blockade and guards into the surface world. They became the first the Geodes, the first elemental sorcerers of Aventuria. The greatest was Brandon, son of Brodosh. He was noble-born and quickly named as the leader of the Geodes. He also became the mightiest of them, but only as he managed to get to the Key of Ore out of the city of Tishiana, the attacks of Pyrdokor's dark elementals stopped. He also found a secret place in the mountains of the Dark Comp, they called the Valley of Elements. To protect this place from the henchmen of Pyrdokor, the Geode sealed the entrance with magical barriers and traps. It is said that Brandon got his sanctification in the Valley of Elements and also formed a pact with the Elemental Lord of Or in here. The location of this valley got lost over the millennia. The Dwarven Geodes managed it to break the elemental power of Pyrdokor, not like other dwarves with weapons, but with magic. The rest was done by the elemental lord of Or himself. He couldn't bear the sight of his children enslaved in iron bodies any longer and freed them. As well as he sealed the tunnels of dwarves magically, so no longer any magical entity could enter them. In the year 4200 before Bosporan's downfall, the two sides decided to declare, declare another ceasefire. They also declared borders south of the Dwarven Kingdoms. The split up of the Geodes. 4100 until 3800 before Bosporan's downfall. Thenceforth, the Geodes were named spiritual leaders of the Angrosham. Around 4100 before Bosporan's downfall, also the priesthood of Angrosh was formed. A great discussion about the future of the Dwarven race began. Some had the opinion to leave the underground cities and tunnels to live on the surface. A group of geodes called Lords of the Earth displayed a great eagerness for power and claimed themselves as rulers over the nature. Against this opinion stood the group called Servants of Sumu, who wanted to protect all animals and plants. The two groups started to feud each other, and the Servants of Sumu had the opinion that only geodes should perform the arts of elemental magic. But the Lords of the Earth wanted to force all Dwarves to learn these arts and live the Geodian way of life, so the Geodes would rule over all Dwarves. The first Dwarven High King, Xagul son of Xorax, was also a follower of this way. After the first edict of rebuilding destroyed cities and reopening orphan mines, he revoked his edicts and confessed himself to the way of the lords of the earth. One fatal order was followed by the next one. The dwarves should close their mines and blacksmiths. They should destroy their arsenal tools and furnaces. Every ounce of iron should be molten down and the tunnels should be flooded with lava. In his opinion, thenceforth the dwarves should live on the surface as hunters and collectors. A lot of fortresses, weapons and mines were already destroyed as the Ark Geode Darbash, a pupil of Brandon, raised his voice against this. He visited the High King in the halls of Xorlosh and found that the king was jinxed by a Geodian spell cast by Abatrox, the speaker of the Lords of the Earth. In fear of the king's anger, Abatrox fled from Xorlosh, but the High King, in his deeply shame of what he had done, committed suicide. 
The group of geodes called Lords of the Earth were banned from the Dwarven Kingdom of Xolosh. Alright, so far to the first episode of the Angrosham. I hope I uh, will get to the second ready very soon and will do a follow up. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please write them below the video. Hope to see you soon next time. Bye bye.